The Habs lose a heartbreaker in overtime after going up 1-0. Former Hab Lekkonen ties the game, and we lose it after a nice Drew chance in overtime. But Anthony Richard, the third Richard to ever put on a Habs jersey, gets a goal in this game. So we got some positives and some negatives to break down in this game reaction edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's Game Reaction Edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, alongside my co-host, Jesse Poirier. And guys, if you're enjoying these videos, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You guys have been doing great recently. If anything, subscribe for the new haircut. Get some RIPs in the comments for the old haircut. If, uh, you know, if you miss the old lettuce, let me know. But uh, it's gone for a while. Maybe it'll be back sometime in the future. We don't know. But uh, in the meantime, let's get into this game. Jesse, that was a bit of a heartbreaker. Montreal was staying with, like, I know Colorado is a bit injured, but they still have some of the best players in the league at the likes of Ranton and McCarr. Montreal, especially Jake Allen, kept us in it, and we couldn't, we wouldn't have gone to overtime and got the extra point if it wasn't for Mr. Anthony Richard. That's so true, you know? This game, it's like one of those where it's like you score early, seems like everything's kind of going well, first period, we're getting our chances, and then you look up at the scoreboard in the second and then in the third period and you realize that we're being tremendously outshot once again. again. You know? So Jake yeah. Allen, yeah, like Jake Allen definitely kept us in this, you know. We didn't play terribly, but I mean, we're, we're happy to get one point. We're not complaining too much that uh, that Colorado's got some big injuries right now. Yeah, I mean, gosh, it's great. Like, like the announcers were saying, at least Montreal got three out of a possible four points on the first two games of this road trip. And boy, did we need that performance from Jake Allen. What was it? 30, 30 odd saves, 34, 35 saves. And that overtime winner, you can't really blame him. Now, I will say, Jesse, we were discussing this. I'm really glad Jonathan Drouin took his shot there, went past the defense. He got rated on goal. No, it didn't work out. It ended up with a two on one the other way. But hey, that happens all the time in overtimes. You got to take your chances when you see him. And unfortunately, Rantanen, one of the better point getters and goal scorers in the NHL, puts squeaks one past Jake Allen. One of the few Allen mistakes, but you can't even call it a mistake on a breakaway. Um, overall, Jesse, were you impressed with Montreal this game and this effort against Colorado? Or do you think they left something to be desired? Because for me, I'm like, yeah, it's nice, but we got, we're got we getting horribly outshot, giving up almost 40 shots in a game again. It's so true. It's like we're a good five on five team, you know, and for the most part of this game, the refs were kind of keeping their whistles in their pocket, you know, which was refreshing. So we got to show those better aspects of our game. You know, we got a decent penalty kill as well. Um, but it's just kind of that lack of that power play once again, that's uh, really hurting us here, you know, absolutely. Because you see when Colorado gets, you know, one of their few opportunities on the power play, they're just taking advantage right away. Quick strike, quick strike from Lecky, you know, as, as we saw kind of burning us on, uh, on that one, you know, so overall, you know, it's good. It's good to get a point and everything else like that, but definitely the young defense, that is the reason why we're getting so outshot. So I think time's going to be the only remedy for that. You know, overall, not a terrible effort though tonight. I mean, not to mention we have our best shot blocker in Savak still on the sidelines, Mike Matheson, while, I mean, he's maybe not one of our better defensive defensemen. His presence is still sometimes missed on the ice, especially when the likes of Chris Weidman are out there replacing him. But um, this game was, was very interesting. We have some injuries. We're still fighting. Like, it's, this Montreal team is weird. It reminds me of some Montreal teams of old where we kind of just grind out games and somehow make it to overtime and win games where a lot of the stats will point to us and say, no, how did you win that? But... Tonight was very interesting because Montreal, like we said, got off to a hot start early. And let's just talk about this Anthony Richard kid for a second. Kid, he's older than me. He's 26, younger than you, but, you know, he's still a kid, right? Twenty. He's getting his first real shot in the NHL. Uh, he's maybe played a couple games before, but man, can he skate. It feels like every time he's out there, he is flying up the ice. And I think it was what Armia sprang him on that pass. He was about even with the two Colorado defenders, and he just got right past him. Beautiful shot. Uh, man, like right past Georgiev and Jesse, I saw someone saying in the comment, like, is he like, is there potential for him to be the next Paul Byron with this speed, this extra breakaway strength? I mean, he, he looked like he summoned the spirit of Maurice Richard on that breakaway tonight. I would say, yeah, more than Paul Byron, definitely <laughs> the spirit of Maurice because he was flying. I've, I've been really impressed and we're seeing what's allowed him to be so successful in the HL so far this year. And also like, in the preseason, we saw a lot of very similar things, you know, so it's really not a coincidence. 
Uh, I'm really happy though, because I think that's really what we need. Like his style of play really suits the Canadians because we're, you know, we're a fast team when we're playing the type of hockey that we like to play. And, you know, our first line was playing good tonight for the first period. Definitely at least, you know, pinning, you know, the avalanche in their zone a couple of times. I thought that Doc looked great. Mm -hmm. And I'm really impressed. Like, I just can't wait to see where he's going to go in the future. Like, how good he's going to look. Like, where do you project Kirby Doc being in the future, Josh? Like, where do you see him? Because I see him really developing into something. I see the makings of a really great player here. Man, that's a great question, Jesse, and I think that kind of comes down to whether or not we end up develop developing him a bit more to play center or if we decide to keep him on the wing, because I have in my notes after this game, the first line needs Doc right now. Yeah, Anderson was okay, but Anderson's a far better fit with sort of a bigger, more physical style of line, and with Suzuki and Caulfield, that fit is seamless. The pass, he had basically a no-look pass to Caulfield right in the slot for a great chance early in this game. It feels like the chemistry is unmatched. So, I it's strange because theoretically, like he's theoretically a center, right? He needs to work on his face-offs, but that's what he played all the way up through. His skill set is really good as a center, but his ability to play that right wing alongside Suzuki and Caulfield is so impressive that even though we traded for him to be a future center, and all projections showed him as being a solid number, maybe two center for a team, I'm having a hard time taking him off the wing. I think... If we keep him on wing, he that first line like could all be easily like consistent 70 plus point getters. Now, nah, that might even be conservative. Like these guys are going to be great for years to come, but uh, I mean scoring a point per game is hard, but it's getting easier in the NHL. Like I don't see why Doc can't be a consistent 70 point getter if he stays on that line. If he mans his own line, that's where it kind of remains to be seen because we've seen that he works really well with one other playmaker and a goal scorer on his line where this is, he's had by far the most success in his career with these two guys in Suzuki and Caulfield. So as a center, I feel like Montreal right now doesn't have the personnel to put around him on the second line to make him thrive as a center. So I think as of now, maybe wing is the best chance. And maybe if we get some more stars in the future, we run him a bit more at center where he can thrive with some better line mates. What do you think? I think that's a great take. I think just because his timeline fits so well, like it's really hard to find three really skilled young players that are all kind of on the same trajectory for development kind of all at the same time. So I think for that reason, you definitely keep them all together. I think so too, for now at least. Um, he looks really good. Another guy I wanted to mention, Jesse, that I thought was impressive tonight was Jonathan Drouin. And there have been times this season where he has a good game and we talk about it. But Jesse, this is three games in a row that I have personally been impressed with. Are, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Like, I feel like he's just got an extra pep in his step and he's really stepping up his game these uh, these last few nights. Marty St. Louis has said that he's had a plan for uh, Jonathan Duguay. And I'm wondering if that includes him playing at center mm -hmm. in the long term. So that could be really something interesting to look at. I know we're kind of juggling some things with Monaghan being injured right now, but he is playing better. And even at this position, you know, he's been showing some great signs. So that's definitely going to be something to look at going forward. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. That line with like Slavkovsky, Duan, and Anderson was weirdly okay tonight. I thought it was pretty good. Although, I will say Slav again, not, not amazing tonight after. He had a pretty bad game, what might have been his worst game of the season against Arizona. But tonight he looked a little better, kept his head up a bit more, and he's still developing. He's still, still developing. So anyone that's worried about Slavkovsky, man, people have been, uh, have been hard on Slavkovsky in the comments. But we're staying positive with the kid. I mean, he's been... He's been showing that he has the poise, he has the character, he has the coachability to be a really good player. But his line mates, Dwayne Anderson, I thought were really good tonight. Um, one guy I thought tonight that I'm just, well, a couple guys that I'm kind of sick of, I thought Dadanov just looked lost. Jesse, there was a point where even the announcers pointed out, off a of face-off, Kale McCarr, who, by the way, was open for like 90% of this game, don't understand. He's like the one guy you gotta hone in on. He was open a bunch, off a of face-off in uh, Montreal's defensive zone. Colorado has an offensive zone draw. It goes right to Makar, no one within 10 feet of him, he walks in for a slap shot. Saved by Allen, face off. And you see Hoffman talking to Dadanov, and they're like, bro, what, what happened? Next next face off, Dadanov goes straight to Makar. He's making brutal defensive mistakes. Like, you can't make that one, and it feels like you can't put, put the puck in the back of the net. Him and Chris Weidman, Jesse, do you, I mean, I don't know what you do. Like, I'm just kind of hoping at this point that 
some guys heal pretty quick, whether that's Galley, whether that's Monahan, to get Dadunov out of the lineup. I'm seeing some people say, call it on the Dadunov experiment. Do you think you're at that point now where we just say, cut the losses on this $5 million contract and move on? Or do you think we can maybe still salvage something for this guy? We're going to have to be patient, but we know he's going to be part of this team going forward. Haven't been too impressed with Joel Armia. You know, can't hit the broad side of a barn these days. You know, getting great chances, but just, just get it on net, buddy. You know, yeah, but anyway, um, you know, we know uh, we know who we want to keep around, you know, and uh, so anyway, it's all, all part of the process. All part of the process. I mean, uh, maybe had a nice pass tonight, but again, so many times in close, can't finish. All flash, no finish, like a lot of players in professional sports, and it's uh, it's getting tiring. Some of these guys on Montreal, but all the same, I thought Montreal fought well tonight. I thought, Jake the Snake, do I still have this? No, I don't. But there we go. There's the snake. I still got Jake the Snake ready to go. He had a great game. Unfortunately, Montreal couldn't pull this one out. But hey, we move on to the next one. This is game two of a seven-game road trip. So we got a lot more game recaps coming up. And as we mentioned, some trade targets and some stuff that we'll be covering in the near future for sure. Uh, but that'll do it for this game reaction edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. We're loving your guys' support every single day. And we love pumping out this content for you. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.